All right, here we go. We are going to start solving equations. Now, this is nothing new for you. However, solving equations for a given domain might be. Now, really the only thing that changes is how you write your final answer. So for number one, we're just going to start out by solving, and then we'll talk about the fact that we are only going to solve with respect to integers. So first step, you would obviously distribute your negative 4, and that would give you a negative 7 halves x minus 4 plus 5 is equal to distribute your 3 fourths, and that would give you your 3 halves x minus 9. Then you're going to solve, so we're going to add the 7 halves to this side, that'll give us 10 halves x, add the 9 to that side, and that's going to give us 10. Multiply both sides by 2 tenths to find out that x is equal to 2. So now what do we do with the fact that this says we're just solving for integers? Well, 2 is an integer, so your solution is 2 inside of squiggle brackets. Now this is called set notation, and set notation is going to be where we list our solutions inside of squiggle brackets, and extraneous solutions in parentheses. Now you do not have to have an extraneous solution. An extraneous solution is a solution you get when solving that does not work with what it's being asked for. So let's say we got x equals 1 half. Well, technically 1 half is not an integer, so it would be an extraneous solution rather than a solution. Okay, so answers are always written in solution, comma, extraneous solution, but you do not always have to have an extraneous solution. You always need to have a solution of some sort even if it's no solution or all real numbers. Little side note, no solution and all real numbers do not get written inside of squiggle brackets. Okay? So let's do another example. And again, you're just going to solve. First step would be distribute your 7. So 7 minus 7m is equal to a negative 10m minus 8 plus 6m. Once you clean that up, you're going to have 7 minus 7m is equal to a negative 4m minus 8. Solve, you get your 3m is equal to 15. So m is equal to 5. So you're done solving. But it says solve for negative numbers. Now 5 is the only solution that we have. So you don't have to make up a negative or do anything crazy. You just have to say that this has no negative solutions with an extraneous solution of 5. That's what extraneous solutions are. So we got 5, but it's not a negative number, so we are not allowed to include that. Notice the no solution is not in squiggle brackets. Okay? Last example for just straight up solving would be what happens when you distribute and you get 10 minus 5x is equal to, once you clean this side up, negative 5x plus 10. You try to add your 5x to the other side and they cancel, so you're left with 10 equals 10, which is a true statement. So in this case, when you have a true statement, your answer is all real numbers. Um, if it was a false statement, say 5 equals 3, then it would be no solution. Now, since there were no solutions, um, we do not have any extraneous solutions. So again, you must have a solution. You do not have to have any extraneous solutions. Next example. You have two summer jobs. One pays 725 an hour, one pays 650 an hour, and you want to make $255 per week. This all you have to do is set up a simple expression. The total amount of money you want is $255, and that's equal to the job that pays 725 an hour, and you know you are going to work there 28 hours per week, plus you have another job that pays $6.50 per hour, and you are allowed to work as many hours as you want. You just want to come up with $255, so we're just going to call that X. 
Now it's just a simple equation. Uh, $7.25 for 28 hours is $203. So you're just going to subtract that 203 to find out that you need to make $52 at the job that pays $650 per hour. So you divide by $650 and you find out that you need to work for 8 hours at your second job. Not bad. All right. Moving on. We have more challenging word problems. Now, if you really want to test your skills with word problems, go ahead and pause this video and give number five a shot. But I will tell you there is something that's going to make this problem a little bit more difficult, and that is the fact that you have different units. So if you want to try this, go ahead and pause it. But we're going to go. So distance is equal to rate times time, and we already know. And for this problem... It says that we have a fire truck called to the scene. Three minutes later, a second one is called. So the first truck averages 30 miles per hour, and the second averages 60 miles per hour, and they travel a total of 12 miles and arrive at the same time. So how long from the first call did the trucks take to arrive, and how far did each one travel? So... We know our distance is going to be 12 total miles. We're going to find out how far each one traveled later. And we know time is represented from the first call. So we know the total distance is 12. So we have our total, which is equal to the speed of the first truck times time plus the speed of the second truck times time minus three minutes. So then that's going to give us 12 is equal to 30 miles per hour for the first truck plus 60 miles per hour for the second truck minus three minutes. And that's where the unit problem comes in. This is 60 miles per hour. So it's actually 60 minus 1 20th of an hour. Okay? And that's the trick. Those are the little details you need to watch out for when you're working with these challenging word problems. Because once you catch that, the rest of the problem really isn't that bad. Okay? So we're just going to distribute the 60. That's going to give us 12 is equal to 30t plus 60t minus 3, 15 is equal to 90t, so t is equal to 1 sixth of an hour. Now we know that's equal to 10 minutes, but this problem is working with miles per hour, so you must be careful. So how long did it take? 10 minutes or 1 sixth of an hour. So now we have to figure out how many miles each one traveled. But for that, we just have to find the first truck. So the first truck we know did 30 miles per hour, and it took 10 minutes, also known as one-sixth of an hour. So the first truck traveled five miles. And if both traveled a total of 12, that means the second truck traveled seven miles. Okay, so first truck, five miles, seven miles for the second truck. And that's it. So as you can see, these word problems will be a little bit complicated in this class. No worries. You can handle it. Just make sure you're being very careful to little minor details and units. Now, question number six, again, is a little bit challenging. I'm not going to step through the entire thing with you. There are different ways to do it. I am going to say pause the video and try this one on your own. And then when you're ready, click play, and I will have the answer worked out for you so you can check to see if you did things correctly. Again, there are different ways to come up with this answer. So mine might not exactly match yours, but our numbers should be correct. Okay? So give it a try. Pause now. Press play when you're ready. 
If you said that B catches A, you are correct as long as your numbers are correct. So cyclist A does 30 miles per hour for the first hour, then finishes the race at 25 miles per hour, um, so our kilometers per hour, and that's for 70 remaining after cyclist B had his mishap. So it takes 2.8 hours for cyclist A to finish the race after the mishap. Now, although it did take him a total of 3.8 hours, since cyclists A and B were even after one hour, the rest doesn't really, I mean, it doesn't matter if you include that or not. It's how fast they finish the last part of the race that matters. Okay, so the way I did this problem is it took 2.8 hours for him to finish the race, which is 168 minutes. And why I changed the minutes, will I'll explain in just a second. And that's because cyclist B did something similar, 30 miles or kilometers per hour for the first hour, and then 27.5 to catch up after his mishap. So after he gets back riding again, it only takes cyclist B 2.545 hours or 152.7 minutes to finish. But he had that 12-minute mishap that he had to fix his bike. So that's why I converted to minutes, because you can't just add 12 minutes to a certain number of hours. You could also convert 12 minutes to a certain number of hours. That is fine as well, which would be 0.2. Um, and you could do it that way. But I just thought minutes was easier, so that's what I did. So then that brings cyclist B to a total of 164.7 minutes. And therefore, he finishes the second half of the race faster, even though he had his mishap. So therefore, yes, B will catch A. All right, that's it for this video. This is Longo, and I'm out. See you, bye.